Hello, I'm Dr. Kim Brown, and this is the Online Prosperity Show. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you ideas of how to use NLP to change your holistic health, change your emotional, physical, and financial pain, so that way you can live the life you want to live. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you Dr. Kim, who is an osteopath and a personal trainer uh, to the show. Welcome to the show, Dr. Kim. Thank you, Prosper. Fantastic. Now, like I said, um, Kim Brown is an osteopath and a personal trainer who actually enjoys spreading the word about health, fitness, and well-being. Now, her interest was sparked as a 15-year-old who was very fit and active, but had constant back pain and constantly uh, mentally and physically stressed. Her ongoing battles with pain and lethargy led her to believe there was an alternative to traditional and, you know, all these contradictory fitness and medical methods that always left her fr frustrated. Now, she is here to tell us how we can improve our quality of life through movement, nutrition, mental well-being, and her newly uh, found, um, you know, occupation in NLP. And she also exposes us to options that will help us have a happier existence. Now, I could go on and on, Kim, um, you know, talking about your accolades and everything else that you've done, but I bet, I guess it's better to hear it uh, straight from you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually uh, got started on your journey there, Kim. Thanks, Prosper. Um, well, I guess I've effectively one career has led to another through a series of frustrations. So I started off as a PT was constantly frustrated with clients coming and expecting to be able to lose weight, even though they'd eat a pack of Tim Tams. Um, so that led me into something more fulfilling, which was to become an osteopath. Uh, it's been exceptionally fulfilling, uh, although very holistic uh, approach, which is what osteopathy is. Um, but it still didn't tick enough of the boxes when it came to emotional and mental health. And this is an area that I've been interested in for quite a long time. You see, when I suffered a lot of back pain as an as a adolescent, uh, I had no idea at the time, and I am now well versed on it, that a lot of physical pain is actually manifested by emotional reasons. So holding emotion and negative emotion within the body will cause a physical pain. Now, through my study through osteopathy, I learned a lot about what they call comorbidities, where there's one physical pain could be caused by a number of different things. And more often than not, we're looking for the physical reason for why we have pain. So, you know, a business person would understand sitting at a desk for too long will cause back stress or neck stress, or these days everybody on their devices will cause neck pain. So we all understand that there's a physical reason for pain. What I was more interested in is the emotional and mental reason for pain. Uh, the mental and emotional reason for stress, anxiety, the fact that we have so much going on that we label ourselves busy, uh, you know, all of those things. So this is where through my own need to combat procrastination, I discovered NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, using words, linguistics, to be able to uh, rewire, reprogram the unconscious mind. And that's for me, has been a massive breakthrough with firstly my own business aspirations and my own business abilities, but also with my career and how that's helped me help so many others, including my osteo clients, uh, to be able to become much better versions of themselves, releasing their emotional pain, their mental pain, which in turn releases their physical pain. Absolutely. So it's been a bit of a journey. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, um, for that uh, introduction. No, you did mention that a lot of physical pain emanates uh, from some emotional uh, constriction that people might uh, be help 
you know, holding. Is there some scientific proof to that? Because some people just really might have pain that might have been from a work related sort of injury. Absolutely. So physical pain, let's say you trip over and you land on your knee. There's a reason for that. So it's called a mechanism of injury. There's a obvious logical reason why you have pain. You bend over and lift something that's way too heavy for you and you strain your back. An obvious reason why there's pain. It's all the other pains that perhaps don't make a lot of sense. Now, the beautiful late Louise Hay even wrote, wrote a book about uh, how to heal your body. Um, uh, let me think of the exact words for it. You, you Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Now, within that book, she's itemised so many different parts of the body and the emotional reason or the emotional attachment or the emotional possibility that could be causing that pain. So there's lots of different um, parts of the body that hurt based on the emotional response to it. Now, there's a lot of research that goes into that book. And of course, since uh, Louise Hay wrote that book, there's been a lot of other books written on metaphysical um, meta metaphysical anatomy, metaphysical reasons. And it effectively, in a nutshell, means that when we have emotional pain or we're holding on to some, some trauma or, or emotion from the past or a fear or a regret or a guilt or any of those sort of things, when we hold on to it, it's stored within our body. Now, a lot of people will describe things like, oh, I feel like there's an elephant sitting on my chest you know, that anxiety, that constant feeling of um, heaviness, etc. 99% of the time, that's emotion or it's, a, or it's a belief or it's a feeling that's being held within the body. Uh, and that's what led me to, to looking into NLPs, to finding out how else could I help my physical patients, my osteopathy patients, how else could I help them on a deeper level rather than just constantly going over the same things in a physical way. There's only so much you can massage and manipulate and treat physical symptoms, especially if it's from an emotional cause. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for clarifying that. Now, from what you seem to be talking, that elephant that is sitting on people's chests, that's a lot, of, that's a lot to do with depression and anxiety. How does NLP help in areas um, of, of removing, you know, those elephants on people's chests? Yeah. So technically anxiety is focusing on something you don't want. So if people have uh, beliefs or past experiences that have caused them discomfort or grief or emotional trauma, then people will draw on those past experiences and expect them to happen in the future. So if someone had a bad breakup with a relationship, then they may have this belief idea that, you know, all men are idiots or all women are stupid or whatever their thing is based on a past experience. And therefore, when they're looking for their next, um, their next partner, they may struggle to find the right person because their past beliefs will dictate their future uh, events and their, and their future beliefs. If they've had a bad business deal, something went really wrong and they lost a lot of money or they, or they uh, ended up in a, in a terrible deal or they stood up at a work function and people laughed at them or anything that could go wrong, because it's happened to them in the past, their unconscious mind automatically assumes that it could happen again in the future. And that's what anxiety is. It's using and reliving events of the past and predicting that they're going to happen in the future and then focusing on it over and over again. And that's what that elephant in the, on the chest can feel like is that worry that past events are going to reoccur. Now, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, helps to completely rewire the programming of the unconscious mind and change the beliefs. So our unconscious mind is what runs our body, stores our emotions, stores all of our past memories, beliefs, habits, values, etc. 
it's what helps our uh, makes our heart beat without us having to think about it. It's what um, works our organs without us having to think about it. So the unconscious mind is always running. And thank goodness for that. We don't have to remember to breathe. The unconscious mind's got it covered. It's also how we can go to bed at night and not have to worry about the breathing, the thinking and all the rest of it. The unconscious mind's got it sorted. But the unconscious mind also stores all those other things, the beliefs, the habits, the emotions, the past events. And it stores it in a filing cabinet effectively that will bring it out for you often at the most uh, inopportune time. So if you're about to stand up at a work meeting and say your best ideas, yet the last time you did that, people frowned upon you or laughed at you or gave you some sort of uh, suggestion that your past ideas were crap, well, why would you stand up in front of a group of people and express how you felt with an idea? Because you're going to believe that the same bad ideas are going to come forward and, and you're going to have the same outcome. So neuro-linguistic programming helps you to completely rewire the unconscious beliefs and habits in our mind so that way we can create much better versions of it in the future. So effectively removing your fears, removing your uh, guilt, removing your hurt, removing your anger, removing your sadness, and also removing those beliefs like I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy or I'm not valuable. There's so many self-talk beliefs we have in our, in our unconscious mind. And without removing them, they then control what we do in the future. So you can imagine all these potential business deals, all these potential kids going into exams, all these potential relationships are actually already about to be screwed up before they even happen because of the belief systems of what happened in the past. And NLP can change that like instantly. Pretty powerful stuff. Absolutely. Uh, great stuff. You kept talking about, um, you know, standing up in front of a crowd. I remember the first time I had to stand up to do a presentation, my mind sat down and <laughs> I can still see that happening with a lot of people and having the fear to continuously uh, go ahead. Now, that's a word that cripples a lot of people. And that's the reason why, um, you know, some people don't venture into doing a lot of things. How can NLP help uh, take away fear um, when, when it comes to, you know, having a happier life or a holistic uh, life in general? So fear is the biggest dream killer. Totally. Uh, with, if, if we were, if we could imagine ourselves going into the future and doing anything we wanted to do whenever we wanted to do it, the number one thing that would stop people being able to imagine that is fear. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of what other people think, the whole comparison game, all of that. What NLP does, and especially in conjunction with what's called timeline therapy, we can completely eradicate fear from our past so it no longer dictates what we do in the future. And it's a very, uh, very powerful process and done like in an instant. It, you know, to, to eradicate fear as a, as a negative emotion takes the average person about 10 minutes uh, with, a, with a timeline therapy uh, specialist. So it's such a quick process and quite different to if you went through, say, traditional counselling or traditional psychology and things like that, where they, where they would give you strategies to overcome fear, but they don't remove it from your nervous system. And what NLP does and what timeline therapy does is physically remove the negative emotion, the fear, from your nervous system. So it's no longer part of your neurology. It's no longer part of your unconscious belief systems. And that's massive. You know, when you go up to, to do a presentation and you no longer have the fear of failure, you no longer believe that you're going to screw it up or you no longer give a damn what other people think of you and you just get up there and give it your all and you go from your heart, the success rate is massive in comparison to what happens when you struggle with fear. And I'll give you an example of that. Many, many years ago, I had a massive fear of standing up in front of people because I didn't like the sound of my own voice. 
in my opinion, and what I'd been told as a kid and teased about as a kid, my voice is too deep for, you know, to be a girl. That's what I was told as a kid. So anytime I had a school presentation or get up in front of people to do debating or anything that involves standing up in front of people and speaking used to completely terrify me. Job interviews used to terrify me, even though I knew my stuff. Oh my God, I have to speak out loud. And that would be horrible because it wouldn't matter how good my skills were. It was my fears that would stop me from putting myself out there. Now, what I've been able to do since doing timeline therapy and NLP is change all of that. And I no longer give a damn what people think of my voice. I've got a message to share and I'm going to damn well share it. So for me, it's just get out there and give my message, not worry about what other people think of my voice or think of what I look like or am I the right image to be able to portray that. You know, I no longer care about any of that. Uh, and that's what NLP does, is rewrites the old inner talk stories so that way you can rewrite them to what you want, something that's empowering, something that lights you up, something that makes you want to stand up and be heard and not the opposite of, oh, God, is anyone going to listen or, or what, if, what if they laugh? Like NLP scraps that out of you. So you can imagine how helpful that can be for business, for anything career-based, for that solopreneur that's trying to do every job under the sun to make their business a success, um, for a relationship where you actually speak up and speak your truth instead of hiding your, your feelings because you might be concerned about what the other person may think, um, for children going into exams and being able to stand up confidently or sit there confidently and do their thing. This is the holistic approach. You know, when there's fear, it can cripple people. It can cripple people to the point that they're no longer socially able, that they're stuck in their, in their own space because they're too scared to go out. I worked with uh, one lady one-on-one -on -one who had been in a horrific car accident and her reliving the memories of that car accident physically confined her to her house. She was 22 years old when I worked with her. Now, can you imagine the devastation of having a 22 year old unable to leave her house because she had this ongoing and repetitive fear of leaving her house and getting into a car? So through NLP and timeline therapy, that completely remodeled her life, like totally. She's now successful in a career because she can get to it. She now goes out with her friends so she's not socially isolated and she's now got the confidence and skills within herself to be herself and not freak out at every loud noise or panic about, oh my God, I need some milk. How am I going to go get it? Like it just completely changes people's lives and it can be small things or it can be amazingly powerful things. You know, it's just overall just life changing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can see how powerful it is because you've enabled uh, that girl at only 22. She should be out and about and doing things, enhancing her life um, in that sort of, um, you know, environment, which, uh, you know, basically would have crippled her if she couldn't be able to do that on her own. Now, speaking of which, you know, yes, we have now maybe gone in, 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 in the past and taken off that uh, fear or that trauma or that accident that would have happened within, um, you know, our subconscious there with your NLP strategy there. And we've cleaned it. Now it's not there anymore. What effect or um, how does the environment we live around have an impact? Uh, it could be the media. It could be like in your instance, people told you that your voice sounded, um, you know, deeper than what a girl should be like. The, the effects of the environment, wouldn't that, um, you know, put it back again? Or is there something that somebody can do if they've been uh, NLP'd, <laughs> so to speak? Yeah, well, it's a really good question because in today's society, the comparison game that people play because of social media is massive and often crippling for people. 
I've seen kids as young as 12 heading off to like their parents taking them to psychologists to deal with the anxiety that social media creates, <clears throat> excuse me, for people because they're so concerned about what other people think of them. Have they had enough likes on their post? Oh my God, you know, I only had 10 likes. That means no one likes me. <clears throat> The teenagers of today, I mean, goodness gracious, the pressure that they feel to be accepted, to be loved, to be nurtured, to be everything they want to be, and the fact that they're stuck on their little devices, and that is like their, their gateway, their window, their opportunity to see the world. It's a very narrow-minded view, but it's what they see, and it's what they know, and it's what they're actually addicted to, which is another story. But because they're forever seeking external validation for what should be internal love and acceptance and all that, this is where NLP and timeline therapy can completely change the lives of those people too. And the lives of anyone. It's not just teenagers because, of course, adults are, are, are just as vulnerable. <clears throat> when people have that internal belief that they always need external validation for what they do, then again, vicious cycle. They're not happy with who they are. They've got that internal belief or could have that internal belief that I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I've only got 200 friends on Facebook, yet you've got 5,000 friends on Facebook. My Instagram page are not gaining followers and yours is. Like that constant comparison, that constant need for external validation for everything that is done. Social media is not necessarily to blame at all. It's just the interpretation of what, these, of what social media creates. And it creates this idea that we need to be loved, liked, accepted, commented on in order for us to be good enough as a human. What NLP does and what timeline therapy does is removes all those beliefs that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough, that you must have external validation for you to have internal value. It removes all of that removes everything that's happened in the past up until current day. Now, does that mean that you'll never have another negative emotion or a negative belief in the future? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean it's going to safeguard you forever, but what it does is clean up the past to current day. Now, when you've got rid of that big pile of steaming crap from the past, it means that you start from clear. So the future is not already... Um, is not already being shaped by negative stuff from the past. It means you start fresh. It also means that you've been able to reprogram the whole beliefs that you're not good enough and turn them into good enough. Turn them into self-love, self-acceptance, self-validation and not needing external validation to be good enough within yourself. Now, if you think of that from a teenager's point of view, that's massive. That saves lives. You know, the suicide rate in this country is unbelievable and on the rise. And so much of it because these kids, teenagers, adults, doesn't matter what age, are so stressed and anxious and concerned that no one likes them, no one validates them, that they ha just haven't got enough internal belief and be strong enough on what they believe in themselves that without that external validation, they feel like they've got nothing. They feel like they hold no value in the world. They feel like they're worthless. Um, and if ever there's a holistic need to eradicate emotional pain, that is it. You know, for someone to feel self-love and self-validation, forget business for five minutes. That's, that's life-saving. It's life-saving, you know, that, definitely. That, that there's so much mental health concerns these days uh, and this is where nlp and timeline therapy can really be so valuable to to change to change the wholeness of someone to change the belief in themselves to give them hope that there is a positive future out there for them now if we bring it back to business and we can you know scrap those old beliefs that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, that you're not valuable. Imagine 
waking up one day and going, I am the most valuable entrepreneur on the planet. I am the most valuable marketer on the planet. I am whatever it is. NLP helps change the identity that we've adopted for ourselves. So if you've got an identity, I am a procrastinator, then that's effectively how you will run your life. Whereas if you've got the identity, I am you know, the youngest self-made millionaire on the planet, that's a very different empowering identity. Or I am an amazing speaker regardless of what my voice sounds like. That is empowering. And this is what NLP does, empowers the individual to get rid of all those crappy beliefs and get rid of all those um, thoughts, habits, beliefs that have held them back and give them opportunity, strategies, everything for the future. And that's life changing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> most of these things, um, a lot of people could be listening to them right now if they're watching the show and you know, it could be new for them and really trying to figure out how best, uh, you know, they can start, you know, uh, benefiting from, uh, you know, this life changing strategies. Now, what's the best way that people can get a hold of you uh, there, Kim? Well, the best way is either through my website at drkimbrown.com um, or find me on Facebook. <laughs> Same thing, Dr. Kim Brown. Um, I am running a NLP practitioner course next month in Melbourne. And this is how my NLP journey started. When I signed up for a five-day NLP course, my mission was to get rid of procrastination. That's all I wanted to do because I felt like a burnt-out entrepreneur with my osteo businesses, my PT business, trying to run an online business. Like I had so, I, I felt like I was spinning so many plates. I was juggling so many plates. And when there's a sense of overwhelm, then procrastination sets in. And procrastination is just a way to try and give you relief from stress, even if it's just for a minute or five minutes or 10 minutes or however long procrastination lasts. All I wanted to do was get rid of procrastination so that way I personally could be so much more effective in my own business, in my own life. And I did this five day NLP course and it completely blew my world up in a good way. It changed every belief I had. It changed every idea I had of who I was and who I wanted to be and who I've now become. And since then, I've followed the journey and I've become a trainer so that way I can empower more people. I love my gig as an osteo, but it's one-on-one, -on -one, which means I'm limited by how many people I can make a difference to in the world. And one-on-one -on -one means time for money. And it means that I can only treat a certain number of people in the day. And that's my limitation. With NLP, I can treat groups. I can help groups. I can train groups. And that means I can empower more people quickly. And that for me lights me up to know that I can make this significant emotional and mental and spiritual change with people quickly and in a group form so that way I can help more people at once. I want to be able to help millions of people around the globe. I can't do that one-on-one -on -one with, with osteo because I haven't got that many hours in the day. But with NLP, I can. And with the changes it's made in my life, I want that for everyone. <laughs> everyone needs to have these sort of changes. You know? So, yeah, I, NLP course is how I started and that's how I really look forward to being able to serve people, um, to, to teach them the skills. And being only a five-day course, it's not a massive interruption to people's businesses. It's not a massive interruption to their life. It teaches you so many incredible skills in a short amount of time and real skills, real skills that you can use in your business, in your relationship, in your health, in your wealth, uh, with your kids, for your kids. Just massive life changes. Absolutely, absolutely. And taking the words uh, right out of your mouth, um, you know, that it's not a massive interruption to people's 
lives. If you can invest five days in order to have a happier ever after, I think that will be something that will be worthwhile. It will be a pattern break from all the mediocrity you've been creating so far. And at least people like Kim who will have the results and are actually showing you how it's all done. Um, you know, are taking the time to, you know, put out um, the work and the strategies to actually help you have a happier existence. Now, Kim, that's a really big pledge uh, to help a million people. And I wish um, we could also be a part of um, helping you achieve that, um, you know, aspiration. So good on you for trying to change the, the way people actually live and uh, relate to the world. Now, if somebody would come to this five day or just maybe knock on your door right now because they've heard um, of the impact that you have and everybody else has got a different situation, do you normally just have like a go-to advice or go-to book that you can recommend to somebody who's still sitting at the edge of their chair thinking, ah, oh, this is all too woo-hoo for me. Uh, but, you know, if, if they could hear it either from you or from somebody else, um, you know, something that could help them elevate their life and their thinking and also maybe bring them closer to coming to you for assistance. As a book, you mean? Like, do you have a book that you can recommend or do you have um, a, a mantra or a way of life that you can recommend to people to, um, you know, go on and leave? I see behind you've got Believe in Yourself. So there could be something that, you know, <laughs> you can impart with us or live with us today. Yeah. Look, one of my favorite mantras is that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting to have different results. That resonates beautifully with me because I, before I did NLP, I felt like I was on the hamster wheel. I felt like doing more jobs, taking on more clients, picking up another MLM business versus trying to do another uh, course. I always felt that adding more things to my life was the way that I was going to make change. But all that did was created overwhelm, stress, anxiety. What I realized was that in order to make changes, you've got to do something differently. And for me, NLP removed a lot of things from my life. It removed my fear. It removed my congestion. It removed my self-sabotage. It removed my procrastination. It removed my worry, my guilt, and everything else that went with it. When you remove all these negative things in your life, you have the ability to do whatever you want because there's space, there's energy, there's time freedom there's life. And I use the analogy, the analogy I love using with my clients is you can go to any motivational speaker or read amazing books, or you can do anything you like that will effectively prop you up with, with positive energy. Let's imagine filling up a hot air balloon. You can keep learning and learning and learning and putting more and more energy into that hot air balloon, putting more and more gas into the hot air balloon. That hot air balloon won't go anywhere until you cut the anchor. And cutting the anchor is what NLP does. It removes the limitations. It removes the fear. It removes the anchor. So that way the balloon can actually fly. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is a powerful analogy. Uh, given the fact that I had a, a three-year-old's birthday party, um, this weekend and there was a lot of balloons around and all the kids were holding on to the balloons and one balloon actually um, escaped the little girl and it just kept going and going and going and that could actually be you you know soaring out there and doing the best or living the best life that you were meant to be now Kim I can't thank you enough for the time you've afforded us today on the show and the expertise and just the value that you dropped on this episode today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.